Good morning and welcome to Sunday the 25th of April. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Debezee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large amount of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, but they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it, and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. 
So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with a fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Lake Galilee feels like it's the epicentre of Jesus' mission. So much happens around it and on it. It was on the shore of Lake Galilee that Jesus first called Peter, Andrew, James and John. It was Lake Galilee that Jesus calmed when there was a storm, and Lake Galilee where Jesus walked on water. And Lake Galilee, or the Sea of Tiberias to give it its other name, is where Jesus goes to meet his disciples in our reading. This is his third resurrection appearance. Immediately after Jesus' resurrection, the disciples had received a message from the angel to return to Galilee and to wait for Jesus there. This is the home for most of these young men. They've already seen Jesus twice, but they weren't sure what was going to happen next. And it seems that in their restlessness and in their confusion, they returned to what they knew best. Fishing. Peter starts it. He suggests that they head out in the boat and the others follow. What else are they going to do? You catch a sense that they need to occupy themselves, to occupy their minds and start to process somehow what has gone on. They've seen Jesus twice. They know he's alive, but they don't know what to do and they don't know what they're supposed to do. Jesus wasn't around to give them instructions or to teach them. So they spend the night in the boat fishing. But they catch nothing. Then in the morning comes a shout from the side of the lake. Have you caught anything? No, they respond. We'll try the other side, lads. See how we get on there. <laughs> and when they do, lo and behold, the nets are full of fish. You'd be forgiven for thinking, hang on, I recognise this story. I've heard this before. Because that's exactly what Peter and John would have been thinking as well. They knew that Three years previously, they'd been in this situation, in this boat, on this lake, with empty nets. They'd heard a command to try the other side, and then, miraculously, their nets had become full of fish. It's a story you can read about in Luke 5. But there's a big difference between the two stories. First time around, Peter's reaction is one of fear. Go away from me, he says, I am a sinful man. But this time, his reaction is pure joy. He recognises Jesus. He dives out of the boat into the water and swims to shore to greet Jesus. Joy replaces fear. The boat arrives behind Peter and lands this bumper catch of fish and Jesus and his disciples eat together. So why did Jesus choose to repeat this encounter? Well, I think it comes down to the theme of fishing. On the first occasion, Jesus revealed to Peter his calling. Don't be afraid, Jesus told Peter. From now on, you will catch men. 
Jesus's command was for Peter to draw people into the kingdom of God, to be fishers of men. So this second episode serves to remind his disciples of what they are to do. They spent three years learning from Jesus. They have now been witnesses to his death and resurrection. And now they're to spread the good news to all people. Fishing was a symbol of mission in the Gospels. And so this story becomes a parable of their impending work and ours. The work of building God's kingdom didn't stop with the disciples. It's been passed down through the generations to us. And part of the call to be a disciple is to be a fisher of men and women. This isn't something that's optional. It's not something reserved for special people. Showing and telling the goodness of God is something for all of us. Now you might be thinking, hang on, look at me. That's not something I can do. Well, if you think that, look again the 12 disciples that Jesus chose. They're not a model of efficiency and competency. Quite the opposite. But they had one thing going for them. And that one thing is all that is needed of us. They listened to Jesus and they did as they were told. And God did the rest. Jesus said, throw your net on the other side. They did it and that net was full. So may you be ready to listen and may you hear the voice of Jesus. And may God through his Holy Spirit give you the courage to respond and obey. And so may you be a part of the mission that God has called all of his church to, to be fishers for men and women and to grow the kingdom of God where you are so that more people can experience the joy that Peter had at seeing Jesus. Amen. Holy God, your Son remained with his disciples for 40 days after his resurrection, teaching them to love all people as friends and neighbours. We, too, are his disciples, and we offer our prayers on behalf of the Church, the world in which we live, and all those with whom we share it. Loving God, we pray for all world leaders that, using Jesus Christ the Good Shepherd, as the ultimate model of leadership, 
They would lead and care for their own flocks in such a way that peace might abound, righteousness flourish, and justice be eradicated. Father God, help us to reach out to strangers in our midst. As we remember the way the early church lived in one heart and mind, and shared everything they had, may we too in this church be always mindful of the needs of others less fortunate, and always welcome the newcomer joyfully into our midst. Loving God, we pray for those who do not know your peace, and for those who are struggling with their lives. We ask for your healing on those who are sick, your strength for those who are tired, and your love for those who live with despair and fear. Gracious God, we remember those who now walk in the valley of the shadow of death. We know that you are with them, and have gone before them to prepare a table overflowing of all good things. Guide those who are left behind in the paths of righteousness, and uphold them in their sorrow with the assurance of your goodness and love. Everlasting God, we ask that you would bless us with vision for the future and reverence for the past. Guide us each day as we minister to one another and to the world. Help us each day to bear witness to your name and to do your bidding, always mindful of your amazing love for us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as Jesus taught us to pray, so we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining me today for our service. Let's finish by saying the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. So from me to you, take care and God bless.